Today's episode of the Poncho Section is brought to you by Strausages. Are you tired of having to chew your own food? I know I am. Try Strausages. Part straw, part sausage. Suck the meat right out of the tube. Ew, sounds gross. Strausages. Now in sweet Italian, spicy pork, and spinach and cheese varieties. Strausages. Yummy, but kind of gross. Hello friends, and welcome to another episode of the Poncho Section. Today we'll be talking about the hit show, Stranger Things. Please enjoy. So what are your thoughts on Eggo Waffles? On Eggo Waffles? Yes. <laughs> I used to love Eggo Waffles. Yeah? That was like, that was a treat for me. And it, what's really sad when I look back on it now is that, and my mom still makes it. She might even, she might even make it tomorrow when I see her, is she, she makes homemade waffles. Yeah. And I would... <laughs> I would want to buy the frozen waffles when I was younger. I don't know why. I thought that yeah. was the treat. But now looking back on it, I'm like, I could have mom's homemade waffles or I could have Eggo waffles and like the homemade waffles instantly seem better. But it's just so funny that back then I was a huge Eggo waffle fan. That's so weird because like, granted, I also, I will pretty much always go for the homemade waffles. But yeah. back in the day, I was really kind of like not digging the Eggo waffles. Mm-hmm. But recently, I've just I've been kind of getting into them. I th- I, I when I, I think of them now, it. I think of like uneven being the, them toasted uneven that like yellowy color. Oh sure. And I, yeah, the, I remember like sometimes if they were in the freezer for too long, you mm-hmm. still get the taste of like that that it's been in the freezer too yeah. long that freezer taste. So I I think about them sometimes and I'm like oh man I miss eating those and then I think a little harder and I'm like. No, not really. I think I'm doing better without them because I don't yeah. think they're the healthiest. I think for me what it was was that um, growing up, my mom would, like when I was younger, she would make me the Eggo waffles or whatever. I think she kept it in the toaster a little too long. Yeah. So they would come out and they would be as like hard as rocks. Yeah. And then... Oh, they were like hockey pucks, those Pretty things. much. Yeah. So like when I started like making my own breakfast, it, like which was later on, like after, because I kind of got out of it. I was like, all right, well, they taste like crap. I don't want. Yeah. And then later on in life, I was just like, oh, this is cheap. Let me <laughs> let me make some, and they're easy and fast. And so when now when I made it my own, mm-hmm. uh, I get to control how long it goes in the toaster, so it doesn't come out as hockey puckish. Yeah, I wish we had like a PA or somebody who could run out and get us Eggo waffles. That would be great. (laughs) That would be perfect because now I'm really in the mood. I wish we had just any sort of person that we could hire. So, so why'd you bring that up? The whole, the whole Eggo waffle? Well, I brought that up because um, of Elle. Oh yeah. Because she likes her Eggo waffles. Mm. You know, we should have said this beforehand, but now for some of you it might be too late, but Spoilers. There's going to be some spoilers oh, yes. uh, this episode. Um, if you haven't already read the title, um, it's about Stranger Things. Yes. So, so spoilers ahead. Yeah, there's going to be some spoilers. So if you haven't seen the show and you don't want spoilers, I would suggest listening to one of our other episodes. Yeah. And maybe coming back to this at a later point once you watch the entire show. Definitely. Watch the entire one season of the show. Right. We hope we didn't ruin the whole thing that she likes. Eggo waffles. (laughs) I think, honestly, I don't think it's a a big spoiler. Because even if you haven't seen the show, you're not going to know what we're talking about. That's true. And then when it comes up, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. It's not It's not... It's not a like a big thing, but it's a wonderful segue. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we wanted to spend today's episode uh, talking about Stranger Things. Yes. It took me a while. Mike wanted to do this for a long time, but I actually hadn't seen the show. (laughs) <laughs> so, because I, I once it came out, when did it actually come out? Because it came out a little like a month ago or no. a month or two you have, ago. You have the computer out. I have the computer out, and I should know this, but this this is only saying the season the season two premiere. Where's um, yeah, I think they recently just came out with the season two premiere, which yeah. I haven't watched yet. I should have watched that. I don't know what I was doing doing at work doing uh, work today. I should yeah. have just been looking at Stranger Things. You no, know, but they they had like a tr- they have they're just writing it now. Like they're not. Yeah, it's still gonna be a while before because it just came out. I did see that there was um, there were like mentions of the episode names, or at least what p- some people think are the episode names. July fifteenth. So it's actually about two months. Oh yeah, look at yeah. that. So yeah, so it came out two months ago, and I would say it took me. I, I just got through it uh, maybe a couple weeks ago. All right. So um, right before Labor Day. Right before Labor Day weekend, so... Cool. I mean, I finished it pretty quickly, but still, people binge-watched it, you know, right 
mm-hmm. right from the get go. Yeah, it came out in the the first eight episodes. It can, I mean, you can really kind of breeze right through it if you're really into it. But um, but yeah, I mean, I I think it's safe to say we both really enjoyed the show. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, along with probably most people I've talked to, <laughs> yeah. I really haven't heard. I've heard one person who said that it was good, but not like the greatest thing. And so I can understand that. Um, All right. And I don't think it's the greatest thing either, but. I really enjoyed it, especially because it paid homage to all these like '80s movies that yeah. I think you and I both like. You know? Absolutely, um, a big fan of like E.T., The Goonies, yeah, you know, Close Encounters. Um, although that, I think that's a little beforehand. That's um, uh, that's like late '70s, I think. I think so, but it, there was definitely some some aspects to that. Mm-hmm. Poltergeist yeah. was another one. Poltergeist, too. Um, Al- a bit of Alien. Yeah, I think it's important to kind of notice those things too, and to not and to see them more as yeah, they're paying homage, mm-hmm. they're not stealing. Because I think right. people look at it, they'll sit back and be like, oh, they did that in ET. Yeah, and it's like yeah, well they know that because they saw ET and they liked ET, right. so they kind of used it. They kind of took all these elements and made it into their own thing, and I think I think that's fine. Yeah, I thought that this was one of the best examples of like doing nostalgia. Right right mm-hmm. like i th- i feel like in sometimes when they do i'm trying to just think like there's that movie take me home tonight or whatever or hot tub time machine where they oh, just yeah. they all go back in time and they have like flock of seagulls haircuts and it, that's yeah, that's it's it it's a very like it's a very specific type of 80s kind of stuff that they go back to but it just doesn't i i feel like that kind of nostalgia doesn't really work and granted those are also comedies they don't they're not yeah. the exact type but you got to you got to capture the decade mm-hmm. and in more ways than just how people dress. Yeah, this one was. I think it was brilliant the way they they captured the the they made the nostalgia really work for mm-hmm. everything. They had the feel of the eighties. They had the look of the eighties. They really and everything that all the themes in the in the show yeah. played off those. 80s movies and the like the music yeah. really worked well with those type of movies that they're referencing like right. the Stephen King movies and the a lot of, a lot of synthesizer the, I yeah. mean I love the music the in John the show. Carpenter oh, and, and, all, and also just the, the opening sequence is amazing oh, and yeah. I forget the name of the band but it was Survive Survive right yeah. okay because they're like they're doing it's funny they were a band who wasn't doing very well and <laughs> I never heard of them before this yeah and I think more people are noticing them now I think they might act. this actually has like boosted their career sure quite a bit so I think I think that's kind of awesome definitely and there was there was definitely like a few things that um, I noticed I was looking at a bunch of the stuff today and and do a little bit of research um, sure. after watching the show a bunch and there were just certain things like they got everything right they got like the the homes and like the mm-hmm. just the color palette of everything they had a nice filter I guess on the whatever the film they were doing the look of everybody the hairstyles yeah, I thought it, were great that see see that was tough for me uh, Winona Ryder in this in this show <laughs> Show. Really? Well, because I, I liked her. She grew on me. But I, it's weird for me to see her. I guess I haven't seen her in a long time because I, I think of her in like um, Reality Bites. I don't hmm. know if you've ever seen okay. Reality Bites, but that's she was playing someone who was like a, just a recent college grad. Sure. I see her in that way or like in Heather's where she's in high school. Heather's, yeah. But there, I just seeing Nona like older. Yeah, I think that me, was like. Kind I mean, of, she's she looks great, but yeah. it's just it's just funny because I'm just not used to her being a mom. But she but she really pulled it off. She well. pulled it off, great. and I think and I think the hair helps. Yeah, the the hair, the hair is, is it's like a more mom. It was a 80, very it's, mom, it's, a, it's a very '80s mom hair. Oh, cut. absolutely. And I think that kind of that really helped trend. Uh, transform her into that and I, I gotta give her credit I mean that's really cool I think it, it was interesting that they used her because she was pretty big in the 80s yeah. like she I, what was Beetlejuice in the 80s or that early 90s but Heather's was I, definitely 80s yeah I think Beetlejuice might have been uh, late 80s um, mm-hmm. that's another one yeah that I should have mentioned but yeah she but. was like pretty big in the in the 80s and then the last thing I saw her in before this one and by saw her I mean like I barely saw the movie I think it was maybe on HBO or something it was that movie with Kevin James and Vince Vaughn oh oh where God. I think Winona Ryder played like a cheating wife or something like that, that sounds, for, uh, one of those two people that sounds about right wait we have the internet. We can look we this up. We have the internet. Um, I remember it not being very good. I I, I remember what you're Queen talking about. Queen Latifah was in it, though. I mean... I mean, and that's, that's, the, that's, bar, that's, that's another, the bar you set for a great that's movie. That's another one I haven't... What? There's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at her... Is it called The Dilemma? Yep. Yep. It came that out in 2011. It. Oh, yeah. That was the last time I saw her in anything. Oh, this is even like she's in with uh, Channing Tatum. Oh, God. Right? Yeah, Channing Tatum. His character's name is Zip. In this, oh. in this movie. All right. 
Yeah. One of his one of his better roles, I guess. Oh god. But you know, like compared to that role, she was incredible in in Stranger Things. I thought she played she played the mother role really well. Mm-hmm. She like was super sympathetic because yeah. you could tell like one she was going through a rough time just mm-hmm. from the start. She clearly had a bad relationship with her husband or or the, well, I believe he did he die? He he left or something. Her, no, her husband yeah, he he left. He left. So they, yeah. Or he left or they, they separated. Right. Somehow. He's out of the picture. So I mean, yeah. he, he sucked that guy. Oh yes, definitely. I now remember. Yeah. So he left. He he left, and um, yeah. it, it it worked really well. Like she could see that she was pretty disheveled from that whole yeah. uh, split up, and then with Will uh, being gone, like she really kind of like was played it really well. Where she she you could see she was kind of losing her mind, but she was fighting against that because she with the whole lights, like she knew she was talking to Will, and she knew that she wasn't crazy, but it yeah. just came off that she was, and she played that kind of role really well. I kind of like that too because I feel like in in most most movies. Movies, TV shows where someone's it's usually the kid that's crazy mm-hmm. and the parents are like oh the kid's it snap yeah. out of it so it's kind of interesting when the roles reverse because you had the the 16 year old you know where he was 16 I think so uh, yeah John I, yeah so he's more it's it's interesting to me because um like he doesn't believe her but at the same time he's not as dismissive if that makes sense I think so yeah. there there's there, he's still in it like he still wants to listen to her right he definitely he you see that he wants to support his mother but he has his like uh, he's, he's a bit skeptical right right so I, I thought that was an interesting dynamic because maybe mm-hmm. I hadn't I don't remember seeing that right. ever and maybe maybe I'm wrong but uh, it was just I, that stood out to me but what's, what's interesting is that yeah I thought that stuff was cool but my favorite part of the show was actually the kids oh uh, absolutely the kids and as well as the cop I thought the cop was really he was great he was a great character but yeah the kids the kids were were really great and you know especially the um, the main character uh, right I guess she's the main character which uh, 11 oh uh, 11 yeah well definitely yeah yeah but I liked I liked the boys too um, <laughs> yeah they they were funny to me Dustin actually Dustin du- was my, Dustin I was my, my favorite I think Dustin was a lot of people's here and also he was always right about everything oh yeah you know he, he really was well, all the, and even, mean, even the chocolate pudding yeah I mean <laughs> I think that all the kids were like I mean they were all a little goofy they were all a little nerdy but they were actually yeah. like really smart kids yeah they're all like into science and, and stuff like that and I think that really helped with getting the the science kind of stuff across as yeah. as um, as an audience yeah. So they were able to like present it to children, and then children, if if they're able to understand it, then I think it was really, it made it a lot easier for us to understand what was going on in the situation. And right. they just all had like insane chemistry. Right. The, all the kids. Oh yeah. No, it was it was fantastic. I mean, I I was really impressed with um, what great actors they were. Yeah. Um, and if, and if you look on like IMDb or whatever. For the most part, they really haven't been in much. There have been in a few things. One of the kids, the kid who played Lucas, Caleb, was... He's been in the most things out of all the kids, but f- still, it's like what he was in. He maybe he was in about ten different things, small I mean, roles. They're babies. I mean, they're all yeah. they're all new. So that was it, great, though. I mean, I, I wonder like who who was casting because it's just it's really uh, interesting how they got so many good people for this. Oh yeah, and and so many and all these kids. So it's like their first role. I mean, that's a big risk, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. But I don't, again, though, with like with young kids, you know, how much experience are they going to have, really? Right. Well, it was, but I think what's interesting is that because they don't have a lot of experience, they were still able to come out with this incredible, um, like, performances. Yeah. No, it's, it's very true. Was there anybody that you thought that you weren't a huge fan of? Any character or any kid? Or any... Uh, any character or, like, actor <laughs> or specific role or... Or well, you know, I hate to say it, but I really didn't like Nancy. Oh my god, me neither. But in the at the end, at the end, she was better. But she was, but she was probably my least favorite character. Now, are you saying that as in like just her, the character that that she was given, or her as an actress, or hmm, what? Yeah. What specifically would you say that about her? You know, that's that's tough because I I do actually think 
she was a decent actress. Okay. Maybe not the strongest of the show. Mm -hmm. But maybe you're right. Maybe it was the character itself that I wasn't that big of a fan of. Because I think even like the evil characters like um, like Dr. Brenner, Mm -hmm. you know, Matthew Modine, who's a great actor and played the part so well, even though he's like an evil character, you have to like admire that. Like, yeah, he did a great job. Oh, yeah. He he played that role excellent. So, yeah, you're not, you don't like him, but you're not supposed to like him. So then he's done a good job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with Nancy, it's kind of a gray area, and I don't know if that's that's a bad thing. But I also, I wasn't as interested in all those teenagers. The teen story? Yeah, that was the least interesting to me. Sure. Yeah, I think... Because it was kind of, it was kind of like very typical. Mm-hmm. It, it just, there was nothing that really stood out to me. Yeah. I mean, I guess at the end, the twist is she's still with Steve, but I was like, yeah, but like, that makes sense too. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I like that they made her still with Steve, because it was, I think it would have been too cliche that, oh, he gets, she goes... With John, he's the good guy. And also, it would be boring for season two. Then. Yeah. Because then what are they going to do? And right. maybe they get into a fight, and then they what, <laughs> then What's they funny is that at first, I remember... So, uh, Steve had the part where he kind of had his turnaround point, when he goes back to... I guess it's the, the movie theater, and he wants to write, help clean off the part where they say, like, Nancy's a slut, or Nancy's a whore, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He wants to go clean that up. So, that, that was his, like, kind of turnaround moment. You, see, you saw, okay, he's actually, like, a good guy. Yeah. And at that point, I thought, okay, good, cool. They're, we're just going to end his story there. Oh. Oh, that's what I was oh, hoping. Oh, yeah, that would have been and nice. Because part of me was thinking, oh, please don't let this be like a, a super like love triangle and it's going to be a fight for the girl, this, that, blah, blah, blah. But you they actually got it. <laughs> <laughs> they actually made it work, though. I thought I was yeah. I was pleasantly surprised that they made it work where he just was kind of coming back to sort of, I don't know, to redeem himself as, as not as supposed to like, oh, I need to get the girl back, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and I liked, uh, you know, and, and I like Jonathan, so I'm always rooting for Jonathan, yeah. but... You know, and I'm thinking of now, too. Um, I said the teens weren't my favorite part, but I liked Barb. But then Barb, Barb. disappears. Poor, poor Barb. Yeah. Oh. I saw something with her. I think it was on um, Chelsea Handler's show. She came on, that actress. Yeah. And it's her first, like, acting role ever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, Shannon Purser. Yeah. Per, per, yeah, Purser. Yeah, so I think that's cool. But, she, you know, she might be in season two. We don't. That would be awesome. Could you imagine she's, like, because, like, they left her behind, now she becomes, like, some evil, like, uh, what is it? Like, upside down witch or something? Yeah. She becomes the queen of the upside down? Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that, I mean, that You assholes be... left me behind. <laughs> yeah, I thought the the relationship, uh, I'm going off, off of this, but I, I like the relationship between... Mike and Eleven the best. That was oh, my yeah. favorite. I thought that was like that was nice. I I really I really dug that. I like yeah. how they. I mean they they had it more like starting out as just kind of like this weird friendship kind of thing. I didn't. Yeah. I liked how they didn't like automatically go towards like a, like a boyfriend girlfriend kind of relationship. Yeah, but they're, they're things. I like mean they're cute, young, though. but like it's, yeah, it's. Um... And what what yeah, whatever they did do for like a boyfriend girlfriend kind of relationship, they made it seem more cute and innocent as opposed to right. like, like serious. Right, which I like. Which, which is it's always funny when you see stuff like that and in these types of mm-hmm. movies you know i think of like something like lord of the flies where they they these kids have been through so much yeah and then there's like this like innocent side as well that's like still that's like somehow still intact sure after everything else that they've been through definitely it's just that always cracks me up because i wonder if like something crazy happened in real life mm-hmm. if i was like 13 i'd be like fuck it i'm done like i'm having <laughs> i'm staying home yeah. not going to any dances well, there, there's, I've, I've always seen think, too much. I'm always thinking in like shows and stuff like that where like they, they go, oh, go through all this crazy shit and then like, although it would, I feel like it would make for a terrible like next season, but like most of them are probably got to go to therapy, right? Like they've been through like this ridiculous shit. Yeah. Like how do you not, how does that not like make you not be able to fall asleep after that? Yeah. Well, that's, that's always the struggle or, I mean, I guess it's something that you kind of have to accept in, in TV shows. Yeah. It's like they just move on I mean, think about an episode of like the simpsons where like something insane will happen <laughs> everything and then, everything, and then everything restarts out and then every yeah it's like a reset button um, well, yeah. um jumping quickly back to the nancy thing and i, I would think what threw me off with her mm-hmm. and i don't know if it's necessarily the actress but i felt that the way that everybody else looked mm-hmm. was looked was seemed legit like everybody else i felt oh, right you were telling me about yeah this. everybody else i think fit like the hairstyle, the way their clothes were. Yeah. Everybody else looked like you. You took them straight out from the eighties. This was an. This was a movie from the eighties. Right. Or yeah, a TV right. show from the eighties. Yeah. For some reason, she looked like 
she was from modern day and they just threw her into 80s clothes. Yeah. And for some reason that just that was the one thing that I always just bothered me while I was watching the show. Yeah. About her specifically. Yeah, I don't know. Well, she didn't she didn't have a quintessential 80s style and I mm-hmm. guess maybe they didn't want to overdo it. Maybe. Who knows? Cuz you look at someone like Bar- her friend Barb and Barb had Barb like looked 80s. Very 80s like the glasses. She and the looked hair. like uh the friend in Goonies. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The the friend of the the main girl if you will. Well, speaking of the Goonies though, you know who that I was going to say before that Dustin yeah. reminds me of Chunk. Oh, um, I can totally see Although that. Chunk was like really, uh, they're, they're different. Their characters are different. Right. But there is there is like a similarity, maybe more just like their appearance. Right. Their appearance, definitely wise. <sighs> now I want to watch The Goonies. It's been so long since I've seen that movie. That's a great movie. I think that's with, what we're going to do after we end this podcast. Totally. We'll, we'll watch The Goonies. With, uh, was it, Anne Ramsey? She's mm-hmm. the, the, the woman. I think that's her name, Anne Ramsey. Anne Ramsey. Wait. She the... was uh, in Throw Mama from the Train. Okay, is that yes? Yes, you're right. Yeah, I I didn't know her name. Yeah, Anne Ramsey. Wow, she died in in 1988. Yeah, I don't know. That's I think like, she, I think it was cancer. That was quickly. That was that was quickly after. Uh, yeah, after the Goonies. Hmm. Yeah, she was in that. Yeah, train. Yeah. <laughs> but back uh, we're, to we're, Stranger we're, Things. We're, we're, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here. <laughs> but I'm looking at now. I'm like in trance with her. Uh, IMDb page. I'm just seeing a lot of her and Danny DeVito, and there's there's one with her and Bill Murray too. But nice. yes, but go on. What um what I really liked about the show, and it's not just the only thing, but I liked that it was short. I liked that it was eight episodes. I liked that they got the concept across. That they each episode was exciting, and each episode was it drew me in. Yeah, and they got it done, and it was done in eight episodes. What's funny is that I, on this, I so I listened to the creators of the show, the Duffer yeah. Brothers, on um. On Harmontown, a Harmontown podcast. Okay. And if you guys haven't checked it out, I insist that you do. Uh, it's a great episode, and it's always fun, and you get to hear the Duffer Brothers talk about it firsthand. But yeah, I mean, um, they were talking about how next season they're doing nine episodes, huh. which is kind of weird. Look at that. Yeah, they just decided to tack on one more. I don't know how like a deal <laughs> like that works. I feel like there's never been a show. Like, shows are either like 8, 10, or right. 12, or 13 maybe. Like, 9 is a weird number to me. I don't know why that stood out, but maybe they'll just, each season, they'll just add yeah. one more episode each, slowly increasing it. What I think is funny is how they pretty much got their start from M. Night Shyamalan. Is that which, true? Yeah. He, they, they wrote a, some sort of, I think they either wrote and or directed some movie or whatever, and M. Night Shyamalan saw it and picked, it was like, oh my god, you guys are great. And he like, he got them to write for a show that he was working on. And of course, a show a show that didn't work. I think it it might have worked. I don't know. Like, of course, I don't have the information here. Out of all the things that I've wrote down, that was not one of those. I don't know what, why. You know, but it was a TV show. Yeah, if you look up the Duffer Brothers on, I'm, I'm looking at it now on, on their wiki. Uh, it'll show you something with M Night Shyamalan. Ding dong. M Night Shyamalan. M Night. I think it's Sham- Shyamalan. Shyamalan. I mean, that guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like. The, it's surprising because like we M Night Shyamalan is kind of, meh. but yeah like, okay so so there you go we found Way, it. Wayward Pines yes but it says he only he oh so he directed an episode of it oh is that think, what happened yeah I don't, I don't think he created it no his creator was Ch- uh, Chad Hodge okay um, but but either way he they he somehow had uh, an involvement in I guess bringing. The Duffers into the the bigger entertainment kind of world on that show, cool. and uh, I just thought that was interesting. I was like, "Oh man, M Night Shyamalan, who I guess like at one point was known for making a decent like kind of horror movie or well, he, thriller he, kind of movie." He made The Sixth Sense, which was a big deal when that came out, mm-hmm. and then Unbreakable, which I think was still pretty. You know, remember that? With, I with did, actually didn't Jackson. see that, but yeah, I know that one. And, uh, and Bruce Willis. Yeah, I remember it being good. I mean, it's been a really long time since I've seen it. And then Signs was like kind of, I feel like split maybe. People yeah, liked it. And then I some people like were it. like, this is pretty dumb. Yeah. I remember as, when I was younger, it kind of creeped me out. And then like thinking about it later, I yeah, was just was like, like well, tin, that was kind of stupid. The tinfoil hats. Yeah. I just remember this one scene where Mel Gibson like freaks out at his kids. <laughs> and I just always thought it was hilarious because I just could never take him seriously. Yeah. He was like, and he's, he like makes everyone 
what they want for dinner. Like he, he goes around like Zari's like I want French toast. Like I'll make a French toast. And like someone else wants like chicken parm. Like I'll make a chicken parm. And then like then no one wants to eat. And he's like no one's gonna eat. Well I'm gonna eat. And he just like eats everyone's <laughs> eats everyone's food. And he just like is freaking out. But oh my god, that's funny. But anyway. From there, I think that's once Mel Gibson started Mel eating Gibson. everyone's dinner, then M. Night Shyamalan's career just started going downhill. That, that was it. That must be it. Then Mark Wahlberg talked to plants, and yeah. I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. I'm a science teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so did you um, <laughs> have, did you hear like where they got, the Duffer Brothers got kind of some of their inspiration for the, the, the show? Specifically? Yeah. Um, uh, specific. Or at least movie. the idea. The, Kind of some some of the ideas of, of this whole thing because it was supposed to actually take place in New York on Long Island. Yeah, I know. Uh, way yeah. out east in, in Montauk. That's what they said. They said, and they also were saying that like Winona Ryder was going to have that more like Long Island accent. Oh god! What they kind of what they kind of did, which I think actually now when I think I think it makes a lot of sense. They kind of played off of what the actors were doing, mm-hmm. so they kind of let them and Winona like run free with it, and they kind of they started to build things I think around them. Yeah. That's kind of what it was. So once maybe like a lot of it was from, and I, and I could be making this up, but this is kind of <laughs> what I got from them. Okay, is that when Winona started talking? Maybe they used what she was doing and said, okay, this isn't someone from New York. This is someone right. from out here out in the Midwest. You know, it's it, they were kind of playing off of what they had mm-hmm. and seeing what would make the most sense around them. Yeah. I mean, from what, it, from what I heard is that, like, I guess there were... Pro- I doubt that it actually happened. But there's the rumors that there was some sort of... Kind of what was going on in this show. There was, like, a military base out on Montauk. Mm-hmm. And that they were doing experiments with kids and this kind of thing. And that something happened and then a monster got it. Or whatever. Yeah. So some some sort of ridiculousness like that, but I, it's it's a cool idea, and I think it worked out really well. I mean, yeah, absolutely. What do you th- what are your, were your thoughts of like the the what is it, what do they call it the up the uh, upside down. upside down? My thoughts on it, or like how it looked on screen. Yeah, or? the just overall like ideas, thoughts. What do you think of the monster? I mean, I thought they did. A, I thought they did a good job. I mean, a lot of the time, I don't. I like more realistic type of stuff. I'm not mm-hmm. into, like, you know, fantasy. Sure. But, I mean, I thought it worked well. I, I thought it was scary. Yeah. Um, I definitely think the I give the visual effects team a lot of credit. Yeah. Because I thought they made it... Again, this is something, even though it takes place in the 80s, it mm-hmm. wouldn't have had... The, it, they couldn't have had those effects back in the 80s. Yeah. I mean, it looked too good. Well, one thing I was... And I just thought of this, and I thought that they did it really well with this. They kind of t- played off the whole Jaws kind of idea. Okay. Uh, where you didn't, you didn't see the monster until the very end. Yeah. So during this entire <laughs> thing, shark. so similar to kind of Jaws, where you just you saw some of maybe some of the the after effects of the monster, that giant stuffed animal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was an interesting looking uh, kind of thing, but it's yeah, but for the most there. part, you didn't see the monster until the very end yeah. you just saw maybe you saw like crawling well, like you saw in the that shadows and, and like the wall coming in yeah the mall and I mean, then you know, popping out right and know. then when the 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 teens had that whole plan and set it on fire yeah you saw a little bit of it there but it, for the most part it was covered in flames right so i think that worked really well where it was not so much what you see, but more of what you don't see yeah. that makes that really well, creepy. I always think that's better. I yeah. mean, I love the movie Paranormal Activity for the reason that you never see the oh, monster. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, fair. It's a low-budget movie, mm-hmm. but they just it, it that scares the crap mm-hmm. out of me because it, because you don't see anything and because yeah. there's nothing about it that seems unrealistic. I think that's what scares me the most. If there's just some giant monster that just comes out, mm-hmm. you know, all all the time, it's be like. Okay, that's scary, but it's not. It's not something. It's like this. This type of thing would never happen. So I'm not gonna. I can't make that association. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it really depends. But then again, there's some. There's some that are really good. You know, I love Hellraiser and Hellraiser. There's nothing realistic about that. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely not. Who knows? But I, I think yeah, we. Um, I mean, most of their influence. Going back to the the whole thing is more. I mean, those these guys were born in 1984. It says okay. So they were. They didn't grow up with these movies. Like they, they just became a fan of the decade. Right. I think they just like you know, like you and me too, just watching movies from the eighties mm-hmm. because we didn't grow up then. Yeah. But we go back and we have a nostalgia for a time that we never even 
were in. Right, we we, but, we were in there for a few months and then we left. Yeah, we weren't we weren't really in it. So um, <laughs> even if you're born in like eighty, though, you're still not really in it. Maybe towards the end. Towards but, the end, maybe. Yeah. But again, the ninety the nineties would be your decade. So mm-hmm. for these guys, the nineties was their was right. their decade. So it was more just being a fan of the movies. Mm-hmm. That everything they when you think about it, everything they got for the show was just based off of movies they had seen, not yeah. things that they had actually experienced. Well, and I think that's pretty cool. Definitely. That and what I thought was interesting is if you look at some of the stuff that's in like their households, they didn't necessarily get stuff that's very specific. Like, okay, the, I think the play, it takes place in 1983. Yes. So they didn't get everything. Okay, every single thing in the house is from 1983. They got some things that are from like the 70s that played into it. Because like, like if you buy things, you don't necessarily just get rid of them every single thing every single year. Yeah. And buy, okay, it's 1983. Everybody get everything everything out of the house from 1982. Yeah. <laughs> so they got stuff that it made it like way more believable. Yeah. That this, this universe of 1983 of you. Yeah. That and what... Well, was really interesting you mentioned the music in the beginning so the mm-hmm. music along with that intro the lettering yeah. <laughs> the lettering was i thought was like brilliant like they yeah. they kind of went off that john carpenter like the thing or yeah. um I, I maybe they used like it as another reference yeah, yeah. a lot of those like um stephen king kind of when, stories when that when the theme comes on and i don't know if this is just me but i feel like i just popped in a vhs tape Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna see like tracking or something. Oh god, <laughs> uh, right? when you get all like fuzzy. Yeah. Oh god, I miss those. But uh, but yeah, I always get that feeling. So they really, <laughs> it's interesting how they've been able to kind of how they've been able to capture that. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, it's cool. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I was when I when I was told, you know, when I saw the uh, trailer originally for this show, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this is definitely something I want to check out. But again, that I didn't expect it to generate so much hype. Yeah. And then I was like, oh no, is this going to be like Game of Thrones? Is this <laughs> going to be like another thing that people are going to annoy me with and I'm not going to watch because people are annoying me about it? <laughs> but turns out I, I caught it at the right time and there was only one season. Yeah. And I, was, I did it and, and I enjoyed it. Did and you I, have a, uh, a favorite um, actor? Or a favorite uh, character? I mean, I still think Dustin was probably Dustin? my favorite. Although the cop was definitely the more, more, most complex. You know, had yeah, like, had multiple facets to him. But Dustin, while he didn't have as much screen time, I thought was the most fun. And, I, and he was always right. Yeah, you know, he was. He was smart. Yeah. Speaking of complex, uh, back to Winona Ryder. I what I really liked about her character, and I'm not saying she's my she was my favorite character, but. I thought she was definitely one of the more com- complex characters, because especially because they had those moments where they would show flashbacks yeah. to when she was a bit more normal with her and Will, and she had her normal regular hair before it was like all, all oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah. So you saw like the different levels of her growth, and I, I thought you could definitely see that was a much more three D kind of person as sure. opposed to like all right, she's the crazy mother. Like yeah. I don't, I, didn't, I never got that feeling with any of the characters that a specific character plays a specific role oh no yeah none of them were pigeonholed to like yeah. one one type of uh, archetype mm-hmm. that's that's, what that's the word we're looking for that's what I'm looking for I'm like what yeah. the fuck where am I going with this <laughs> yeah archetype yeah. so uh, yeah which I always like because like all the kids weren't nerds wearing glasses walking around right. like hey guys how's it going yeah you know? and each of them had like their own kind of just they Quirk. had their own skills the quirks yeah they had quirks yeah. skills they had their flaws some of them mm. were they had to deal with like the jealousy um lucas and uh will kind of mm. dealing with their relationship now that Elle is now in the picture yeah they had those sorry there's a there's a dog in the background <laughs> um uh but they had to deal with those those like douchey bullies. oh the bullies yeah those i mean those were awful bullies are like you're, we're gonna like you're gonna <laughs> jump in the yeah, jump in the the what is it the quarry? Yeah, and we'll 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 explain this somehow. We'll get yeah, out of this. Yeah, jump one. in the quarry, or we're gonna slash your friend's neck. Yeah, I mean that that to me that was a little much. That I I, I kind of don't like that because that's like so intense, and I'm just like, come on, kids. I know you're stupid, Ooh. but like you, you can get to a lot of shit for this. <laughs> <laughs> Although that does play into the whole like uh, what is it? Um, they're not gonna get away with that. Uh, stand by me kind of thing. Yeah, but like yeah, it's true. But they're not gonna get away with that. No. <laughs> Stop. Although somehow, like the, he was like, oh, the the girl beat me up, and they got like the cops to go after 
after that. Remember at that part? Yeah. Where, like, his mother was pissed off. Well, I would tell, like, be like, hey, listen, like, these bullies, they wanted me to kill myself. Yeah. It's like, well, well, So my friend with superpowers came along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that wouldn't, that story wouldn't go over too well. <laughs> I really enjoyed the whole um, relationship between Elle and, what was it, Dr. Oh, my uh, God, Dr. Brenner. Brennan, Brenner. I, yeah. like, really liked that whole, it was creepy. Like, creepy he had fuck. He had that whole, like, daddy, like, whatever kind of thing going on. And mm. it, it was just, like... I don't know, he was just so sinister. He just, it was like kind of creepy. Like he, it was, I think what made it extra creepy was the fact that he was being, he was doing everything, everything that he said was in a fatherly kind of way. Yeah. But his actions told a different story yeah. that I was just kind of like, every time he was in the, the screen, and I think, um, I think Matthew Deed was like really great in that uh, in that role, but it was just so creepy every time I saw him. Well, it's, it's always creepy when it, there's kids involved, where it's like yeah. adults with kids and, and taking advantage of kids. Mm-hmm. There's always just like, ugh, like it just it yeah. kind of gives you chills. I'm like, I really hope this doesn't go any more south because I don't know how much more of this I can take. Yeah. That, <laughs> well, that, and then there's also just like, I think it's like a, tr- I don't know if you would say a trope, but it's like a, just a thing in the psyche of people where kids. I, fi- I find that in, like, horror things, kids are always the creepiest. Yeah, but this like, wasn't the case. This is not... That was not the case. This yeah. is kind of, like, I feel like a, a flip of that kind of thing where, like... Especially even, like, somebody with superpowers. Yeah. That kind of has, like, the, the carry kind of thing. Yeah. You know? as another Stephen King kind of kind of mm-hmm. thing going on. A girl... Like, a young girl with th- these powers. Yeah, but she's not, like, creepy like Carrie. Yeah, no. I think what what... Really yeah, no, taking like little little snippets. Yeah, and I think what really helped with her character, uh, L, we're talking about, and made her like really sympathetic is that she because she was, she even though she had these powers, even though she's been through all this stuff, she still seemed to be like just a really like nice and good kid. Yeah, he liked her. Yeah, yeah. I felt bad in that first episode when she goes into that that diner. And, oh yeah, and the guy is like giving, making her food, and then the other woman comes along. What was her name? The one who w- worked with Matthew Modine. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Who she when she shoots him? Right. I was like, what the fuck, lady? She was. Whew. Yeah, that that kind of that came out of nowhere. I knew, uh, but I knew the second like he opened that door and she was there. I'm just like, oh. Well, I can't. You know why I can't find it? It's because I'm still looking at Wayward Pines. <laughs> <laughs> that might be why. Well, yeah. while, while you look for it, one of the things I really, really liked, and I think it might be one of my favorite things mm-hmm. that they did in that in the show, and it's the use of the lights. Okay. And how, in in a few ways, one when Will disappears for the first time. Yes. He's in, I believe it's his shed, and there's one light bulb, and it gets really bright. Poof, he's gone. Yeah, and then later in the in in the next episodes, he uses the lights to try to communicate with um, Winona Ryder and her character, mm-hmm. and just how uh, she eventually just rigs up the whole system mm-hmm. in her house, and she creates that whole like genius like alphabet kind of system. Yeah, and just how the lights flow through the house and it kind of shows you where he is in the house yeah. and all this stuff. I really liked that. I thought that was like so smart and a really like great kind of cool idea for yeah. the show. That was definitely one of my favorite things. No, yeah, that was that was really cool. By the way, I'm just I just want to uh, say that her name was Agent Connie Frazier. Oh, okay. Um, which I don't know if they ever say her name. I don't think so. Um, who's the, who's the actress? Catherine Dyer? I don't know. Anyway, that's that's <laughs> that's that thing. But um, but yeah, no, I, I like that as well. Yeah. What was that? There's something else. There's some movie where they do that, and and I couldn't figure it out because it looked so familiar to me. I mean, the only other thing I could think of would be maybe, and I, I, it's like grasping at straws here. Uh, the Close Encounters of a Third Kind, because yeah. it kind of has that like. Do, Although, do, yeah, do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, it has that kind of like lights yeah. and music kind of thing going on. That's but, true. Yeah, but I I can't think of anything <laughs> more specific. I love that movie so much. And funny enough, I actually never saw the whole thing. I saw very I thought saw specific scenes because I took a, a film scoring class, mm-hmm. and like we watched certain scenes and how the music of that movie like really affected it, yeah. especially like those. Uh, was it like four notes? Five notes. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and like how I guess whoever I'm was it John Williams was he involved? I, th- was, I was think he so. At that point, I, I mean, it's Spielberg. Spielberg. I can imagine that. But so it was a sec- I think if, it was the second movie. Either it's John Williams or somebody whoever did the sound design. I know that he uh, was looking to try to find some sort of combination of notes that would not be like in any song, sp- like specific songs so that they wouldn't uh, be copyrighted or anything like that. Not a non-specific, nondescript kind of little tone yeah. or, or tune. Oh, Terry Gar was in a movie too. I remember that. Terry Gar. Yeah, she was in Young Frankenstein. Yeah. We got to do a finish our marathon. Yeah. We still <laughs> got we still got a few more to go. Let's see. What music, music, music. There's got to be someone listening who's like really frustrated. Yeah, music by John Williams. There we go. Okay, so it's John Williams. Yeah, yeah. I, I figured as much, okay. but I wanted to confirm it. Before. Sure. Just, just doling out false yeah. information. <laughs> You're probably right, though. That's probably where they got some of the inspiration mm-hmm. from. And that's and that's late 70s. 77 was Close yeah. Encounters. That, and, but they took a lot of things, I think, from Spielberg. It was a very Spielberg-esque... Mm-hmm. Um, you know what it also kind of reminded me a little of? Um, but I, no, I actually think it did, it did it better. Uh, this this show it did it better than um, what was it? Um, oh my god, the J.J. Abrams uh, movie, Super Eight. Super Eight. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I I kind of th- was thinking about that too. And mm-hmm. I I liked Super Eight. I liked it. Don't get me wrong. I liked it, but I think I liked this a lot better. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. Um, but I thought Super Eight was like a good a good start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and also, you gotta you gotta think too. I feel like if you have a TV show, you have a lot more freedom because it can go on for longer. Of course. And you, there's not as much like, you know, movies have to be somewhere in that like two hour kind of mm-hmm. range, which I think is kind of funny to me that that movies are all like this in similar kind of like, but everything's like so, like no one's kind of gone outside of that. Right. You know, but. How about, do you want a five-hour movie or something? Hey, you know, put in some uh, intermissions and you got me. You know? <laughs> um, take, an, take an afternoon. Sure. Yeah. Why not? But yeah, um, I think they had a lot more freedom. They could do a lot more. Yeah. With with eight episodes and, and also continuing a story for as many seasons as they want to go. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they could go for a while. My, my, thing, my hope is that they don't go on too long. Yeah. Definitely, I hope um, a few more seasons, maybe. But. Yeah, not not too many more. Did mm-hmm. you have a like a favorite thing or a favorite scene from the show? Um, a favorite scene. Um, you know, I liked, and I don't know what episode it was, but I like when the cop, cop when he finds out what's going on, mm-hmm. and um, when he gets into the lab. I think okay. that that's like my favorite. That was cool. Yeah, that that might have been my because I was like because I didn't expect that. Yeah, I always see a I never see a cop as someone who's going to get like so involved. Right, and I didn't. I just didn't expect him to get so deeply mm-hmm. involved in it. So yeah. I thought that was that was probably my favorite. Definitely. Yeah. I, what I thought it was interesting about his character is it seems like it was this. He's clearly on like this road of redemption yeah. because he couldn't save his daughter. Yeah, and it looked like that's what he. I guess he was trying to gain some of his life back by doing by yeah. trying to save Will from. Uh, well, yeah, that's that was the whole idea. Mm-hmm. He wanted to have something because you could you could tell this guy just did not give a fuck. Yeah, like, he just was just like whatever. Well, um, I, I thought he was a total badass. Yeah, well, because it's like that kind of. I feel like when something like that happens to you, it's just like, what what else am I gonna do? Yeah, you know, he lost his wife mm-hmm. because. They just obviously, after the kid died, I'm sure their marriage just went to shit. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, fuck it. I'm just yeah. I'm doing this. Have you heard any of the um, like the, the theories? Like the fan theories and all that stuff? Let's hear them. I know. I, stay, I try and stay away from that stuff. The only one that, that I thought that was like really interesting was that the monster is a result of Elle. Like the fact that she went to that... Um, oh... That, that she went to the... I don't know what... I have heard that. I don't know if it was... I don't even know if it was in the Upside Down at that point. I think she just went to this area, this space. Yeah. The, the, it was a void, basically, at that point. I heard the, the, the theories that because she went to that void, mm-hmm. she created, like, an anti-version. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know if I agree with it, but I thought it was, like, one of the more interesting ones. Mm-hmm. Beyond the fact that... Uh, what's it called? I heard that... that st- Steve and Nancy, their offspring was that guy from oh, from Parks and Rec. Oh yeah, that's that, a whole... that, that's one thing that I heard. That the, oh right, because he Steve and Nancy's child is the the guy from Parks and Rec. I mean that I have I could believe that <laughs> sooner than I could believe. <laughs> <laughs> 
was the guy from Parks and Rec's name? Ben I'm, Schwartz. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you have any predictions of what will happen next year? I, you know, I don't because it, it ended with him going uh, with the cop going and under like the rock. Yeah, and, he and did. I don't know. I don't know what he's involved with. I mean, there there's something going on between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't know. Like, I couldn't come up with my own prediction. I don't have my own theory because mm-hmm. I'm just kind of. It's kind of one of those things where. To me, it didn't seem all that predictable, so... Right. It's like the only thing I could yeah. possibly guess is know. that something's going to happen with Will. Either, like... I, I, either, like, something really bad or yeah. just bad. I, it's either going to... It's going to be bad, but it's either going to be just bad or really yeah, bad. Yeah, he's not in the clear. No. Uh, yeah. I think... Because the whole thing where he's, like, coughing up slugs or whatever those yeah, things are. Yeah, they kind of just, like... He might just be, like, this, like, alien kind of host. Yeah, that's a weird side Like, effect. you know, from, like, the movie Aliens, they have, like, the kind of... What, they had that thing stuck down him, kind of like. I'm thinking of spaceballs now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but in like Alien, they had like the face huggers, and they kind of, I guess, they technically impregnate you with like yeah. whatever Alien is. And I mean, it's a child, so. But what Will also had like a slug type thing shoved down his throat, and now he's coughing up slugs. So I'm wondering like how much of that alien kind of thing is going to be played off in the next season. Is he going to be like, what is he going to be coughing up bigger things? Is he going to be turning into something? Yeah. What's going to go on with that? I think that there, there's like an open, there's an open story there. And right. I, I feel like they kind of write themselves into a place where they don't, they don't really know where it's going to go next. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like they're discovering to the writers. I think that that's so cool. But, uh, Definitely. but yeah, honestly, I don't, I don't know. Um, what's going to happen but I'm really excited for when it comes out I'm sure we'll have to wait until next summer yeah you know I'm pumped at, at the soonest I'm um, excited but, but yeah I think um, I think we covered pretty much everything yeah we think did so. a good job uh, yeah anything else you want to add no nothing really did yeah. you guys listen to it or watch the show listen to it the people listening did you watch the show if you did let us know what you thought about it yeah, and I also want to say, too, that um, go to our Facebook page, and in the comments, anywhere you'd like, we do read them. Uh, give us some suggestions of things you'd want us to cover. Oh, yeah. We're, we're open. We're, both of us are really open to any ideas, yeah. um, you know, so, and we can talk about it for, for an entire episode, or maybe even bring it into two parts. Yeah. Who knows? Do you have any en- questions? Endless possibilities. Any, uh, any questions you would need our advice on? Hmm? Hmm? We're, we're wonderful people to answer those. Give us a try. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's that. That's it. All right. All right, All right guys. Thank you so much for listening. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Peace. <laughs>